What's up guys, I'm Dave Klein, and today we're going to talk about the father of the abyss who spread the curse that plagues Lordran, as well as the forgotten lord who found the dark soul. Are they one and the same? It's time to talk about Manus and the Furtive Pygmy. When talking about Manus, it all starts with Ulysil. According to the Ulysil Ivory Catalyst, the white bark boosts sorcery adjustment, but the sorceries of this land are gentle and not affected by intelligence. In fact, when first looking at Ulysil, it would seem all sorceries of the land are just that, gentle in nature. No spells immediately available from the land of Ulysil directly deal damage, but primarily focus on invasion and usefulness, such as casting light, and are even put to use in the elevators of the land. Yet, Ulysil, a township known for its positive and peaceful magics, had a dark secret, one hidden away deep in the mountainside it was built along. Seduced by a dark serpent or no, they awoke that thing themselves and drove it mad. One's demise is always one's own making. Deep into the depths of Ulysil lies the Ulysil Dungeon, a dungeon where it would seem the townsfolk tortured various humans they found. Broken through cells can be found, with chains dangling from the ceiling. Players find one such tortured soul, a human transformed by the abyss, who seems to have been mounted and chained to a pole. We can infer this creature was a human, as its only drops are from the chain set. Chainmail armor of thin interlinking rings of steel. It is common throughout the human world since it can be easily produced, is not too heavy, and offers good defense. And what was Ulysil, a peaceful township, doing torturing the various humans? I believe that they were trying to draw out and discover new dark magic. Dark fog is described as in theory, relatively close to humanity. It also happens to be a terrible poison for humans. Perhaps it reflects man's cruelty against his own. Most dark sorceries are described as an abyss sorcery discovered by an Ulysil sorcerer on the brink of madness. I believe that, in order to discover this sorcery, the sorcerer had to take part in torturing the various humans, and was possibly human as well. As Goff tells the player, Ulysil was seduced by a dark serpent, likely Koth, telling them a tale of the power of the dark, and in their quest for power, they discovered an ancient burial ground, where they awoke and enraged the primeval human that lay there. Terramantis has a great video describing just these events in his Legends of Lordran series, which I highly recommend checking out, as it helped give me several clues as to what really happened in Ulysil. I believe the people of Ulysil awoke the primeval human who lay in the burial and tortured it. They tortured it to the brink of madness, as they were accustomed to. I believe that throughout these events, the primeval human had one trinket that kept it sane, the broken pendant. Half of a broken stone pendant. The vine appears to originate from Ulysil. A powerful magic can be sensed from this ancient stone, yet men of this time can neither manipulate nor sense its power, which has a distinct air consisting of both reverence and nostalgia. It seems to me the Ulysil sorcerers torturing this primeval human realized the significance of the pendant and snapped it in order to take the final thing this primeval human had, setting him over the edge and transforming him into Manus, father of the abyss. Ancient Manus was clearly once human, but he became the father of the abyss after his humanity went wild, eternally seeking his precious broken pendant. I still think on that creature from the abyss that preyed upon me. My faculties were far from lucid, but I quite clearly sensed certain emotions. A wrenching nostalgia, a lost joy, an object of obsession, and a sincere hope to reclaim it. Could these thoughts belong to the beast from the abyss? But if that were true, then perhaps it is no beast after all. Oh, please forgive my ramblings. It's just that I wish to know the truth, and no one, not even loving Elizabeth, will tell me. By trading Manus' soul to Snuggly the Crow, the character will receive Pursuers, which is the sorcery of Manus, father of the abyss. The will feels envy, or perhaps love, and despite the inevitable trite and tragic ending, the will sees no alternative and is driven madly towards its target. That target being Manus's pendant. 
Manus, driven mad, attacked everything around him. His humanity and power gone rampant created a spreading abyss and powerful spread of dark that began to consume all of Ulusil, transforming and corrupting all in its path. The sorcerers of Ulusil got what they wanted, but could have never predicted the sheer power emanating from the primeval human in which they awoke. A power of perhaps the dark soul? In his rage, Manus trampled all around him and even stole the beloved princess of Ulusil, Dusk. But Princess Dusk is here no longer, snatched away by that horrifying primeval human. The player too is snatched away by the power of Manus through time itself in his rage and attempt to find his precious broken pendant. But is Manus the furtive pygmy? Let's first take a look at what we know about the furtive pygmy. Then from the dark they came and found the souls of lords within the flame. And the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. So what do we know for certain about this furtive pygmy? Well, if Koth can be trusted, which, well, okay, he can't. He regardless gives the player our only info about the furtive pygmy. After the advent of fire, the ancient lords found the three souls, but your progenitor found a fourth, unique soul, the Dark Soul. Your ancestor claimed the Dark Soul and waited for fire to subside, and soon the flames did fade and only Dark remained. Thus began the Age of Men, the Age of Dark. I believe, while Koth cannot be completely trusted, in this we actually are receiving accurate information from him. Another quote I find incredibly interesting comes from Japanese radio show Game no Shokutaku. In an interview about the furtive pygmy, Miyazaki reveals, the image is something like a human ancestor. It found the Lord Soul and humanity is like a fragment of it, kind of like an ancestor, so the descendants have a part of that soul. With this information, we can look at the various humanity sprites the player finds throughout the game. This black sprite is called humanity, but little is known about its true nature. If the soul is the source of all life, then what distinguishes the humanity we hold within ourselves? Each human has a fragment of the dark soul within them, which is their humanity. So I believe we can say we know for certain the furtive pygmy was the ancestor of humankind. He found the dark soul and this split into several humanity shards, which is what all humankind have within themselves, making them human and not just some wandering lost soul. I think it's also safe to say the furtive pygmy would have had a powerful humanity in order to do this, as its humanity is the dark soul. With that said, take a look at Manus' soul and compare it to humanity. This extraordinary soul is a vicious, lukewarm lump of gentle humanity. Ancient Manus was clearly once human, but he became the father of the abyss after his humanity went wild. You can actually see the humanity going wild, and at the core of his soul is humanity. We also know thanks to Elizabeth that Manus is a primeval human. Furthermore, looking at his burial site, we know he was incredibly important. As my buddy John Quick pointed out to me, the stones encircling Manus's burial are reminiscent of Stonehenge. It is a clearly marked burial site and one that seems to be extremely important. As we know, humanity is central to the influence of the furtive pygmy. We actually see humanity sprites within the Ulusil dungeon, which seems to be created by the spreading abyss created by Manus. A final clue we have is that Manus is the father of the Abyss. Bear in mind, we know various other humans have been tortured by Ulusil, yet none have created such a catastrophe. I believe Manus is not only the father of the Abyss, but in fact the furtive pygmy. His soul is the Dark Soul and thus why it is so powerful. It is powerful enough to cause him, in his madness, to create the Abyss, a spreading darkness and power to contend with the likes of the Bed of Chaos. 
while the bed of chaos was the life soul gone rampant, transforming all life around it into demons. I believe the abyss is the dark soul gone rampant. Its power transforms Manus from a normal human into a beast, and one powerful enough to pull the player through time itself. The evidence to support Manus as the furtive pygmy goes beyond just in-game content. When looking at the name Manus, it has a number of implications. In Latin, Manus translates to hand, or the hands, which is a good description of Manus, who has a giant transformed hand. Reddit user MS Painting pointed out to me Dark Souls seems to borrow heavily from Hindu mythology. One great example is in the god Ila, who is known for his slash her sex changes, from male to female. Ila is also considered the chief progenitor of the Lunar Dynasty. Sound familiar? Further in Hindu mythology is Manu, who in some Hindu traditions is the progenitor of humanity and is the first man. I believe the furtive pygmy was the progenitor of humankind, as Koth suggested, and went into a deep slumber where he was worshipped as a god by the first humans and eventually forgotten over time. The people of Ulusil eventually discovered his burial site, where they drove him mad, transforming him into Manus and causing the Dark Soul to run rampant, creating the abyss in its wake. Alright guys, that wraps up my Manus and the Furtive Pygmy lore video. If you don't believe Manus was the Furtive Pygmy, as I suggest in my video, I'd love to hear your thoughts, and I'm curious to see what you guys think. I also want to, once again, share Terra Mantis's Legends of Lordran video on Manus, as I think it was a great take on what Manus was going through from his perspective as he was being tortured by the people of Ulusil, and it really opened up my mind for a lot of my thoughts on Manus. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace.